Hello and welcome to my talk. My name is Elmar. I am the head of Incident Response and Threat Intelligence Department at Positive Technologies. Today I want to talk about an APT group which we had discovered. We used to a simple TTPs but managed to stay effective in the operation. We call this group Taskmasters and I explain why a bit later. The activity dated back to 2010, but early activity is also possible. They have a clear focus on S pionage, interested in stealing confidential data. The toolset contains over 30 tools, and the network infrastructure contains dozens of dynamic DNS domains in situ servers. We were unable to find any public mentions uh, of this group, uh, which is surprising because the operation is quite big. Uh, let's talk about victims. So we identified over 30 uh, victims in Russia and CIS countries. They mainly focus on targeting government-related and military-related organizations. But we also found a couple of cases where they targeted telecom companies. We think this is uh, because they might use them as an entry point to other organizations. Uh, because, uh, at least in one case, uh, the telecom operator was a major supplier of network access to the government organizations. We also observed cases where they were targeting small businesses and use the infrastructure to host malware and proxy network traffic. Here's the overview of the kill chain this group uses. Unfortunately, we were unable to identify the initial vector. This is mainly because of the long presence they achieved. At one customer we worked with, they achieved an astonishing 80 years of presence. But we suspect it was phishing. The escalation uh, was done uh, with stolen credentials and the eternal blue exploit. Lateral movement includes network scanning, proxy network traffic, and utilizing legitimate administration tools such as RDP and network shares. Data exfiltration was done by staging uh, RAR archives on internet available servers. Uh, data stealing uh, also were done via malware and they also steal emails. Now let's talk about different types of malware we discovered. The first one to talk about is Remshell Downloader. Its job is to deliver the main Trojan. It's uh, a simple downloader like many others, but what is interesting here is how payload is delivered. The downloader contacts C2 server on a hard-coded HTML page. The page either contains a payload or just a sleep command. The payload is stored as a Zlib compressed, RC4 encrypted, and Base64 encoded HTML attribute. So it's stored inside an HTML attribute. In 2019, we also started seeing the payload also being the packet by VM protect. The pages themselves were typically cloned from some IT products. As you can see on the example here, it is a German version of a VMware. Now let's move on to the main payload. It's a simple backdoor capable of executing system commands, uh, uploading and downloading files. We also observed a subset of samples uh, which were implementing only uh, some of the commands, for example, only shell access. Its uh, configuration is hard-coded and it's using HTTP-based protocol. It's beaconing to an URL of four zeros, uh, output of the CMDC hostname command, 
and uploading results of the commands to the URL of four ones. It's pretty basic, so the main interesting thing about it is its ability to switch to the secondary C2 server. But it only works till the reboot of the malware, since the first C2 server is hard-coded. During our research, we were able to find a misconfigured servers, which allowed us to obtain a server binary for the payload. It's a custom HTTP server, which provides a command line interface for the operator to interact with the victims. Interestingly, this binary contains the support for the Russian encoding, which clearly indicates a focus on Russian-speaking targets. <laughs> Turns out the server uh, logs every operator interaction and basically acts as a key logger. The logs uh, is uh, stored on the C2 server and they are RC4 encrypted. Uh, we collected dozens of such logs, which gave us a unique opportunity to have the over-the-shoulder look at the operation and interaction with the victims. Here you can see examples where they steal VPN configuration data, downloading malware, moving laterally with PSExec, and their favorite tool, AT now. One of the main lateral movement techniques they've been using is by utilizing this tool. Hence the name Taskmasters we gave them, since they like creating tasks so much. Now let's move on and talk about different tools they use. They have a rather big arsenal of public and private tools. They use uh, sysinternals tools for the lateral movement and credential access, such as PSExec and ProcDump. For credential access, they use Mimikat, GSecDump, and PVDump tools. For network scanning, they've been using NBT scan and SMB touch, which is used to find Eternal Blue exploitable hosts. They, for network tunneling, they've been using HTRAN and Regiorg. And they also used a couple of web shells such as iSpeak Spy and GSP File Browser. As for private tools, they have a custom tool to record network traffic in PCAP format. They have a HTTP pink utility to check connectivity. They have a custom PST parser and various NetBuse tools, which allow them to copy remote files, browse network shares, and enumerate logon sessions. Now let's talk about, now let's have a closer look at some private tools they've been using. In the arsenal, they have a time stomping tool. You can see example of its usage here, where they manipulate timestamp of the web shell they've been uploading to the Exchange server. This tool is using set file timestamp API. Uh, interestingly, we didn't find exactly this version of the tools you see here. Instead, the version we had were uh, hard-coded to clone timestamps from kernel 32 DLL. This also shows that hackers knew about forensic techniques such as timelining. The next tool is a raw file copy tool, which allows them to copy files even if they're locked by some processes or system itself. It uses cluster offsets and leverages uh, device I.O. control and raw access to the hard drive to copy files. Another feature it has is the uh, ability to copy files directly from MFT. As you may know, small files is stored directly in MFT, so it's accounting for this case. 
This tool is, uh, contains a public Eternal Blue shellcode and network packets which are RC4 encrypted. Interestingly, RC4K is passed as an argument to the tool, so we didn't have the key. But, uh, however, actors made a mistake with RC4 implementation, which allowed us to perform a plain text attack. The mistake was the RC4 reinitialization, which basically uh, eventually led to data being encrypted with a single block. So that's how we know what's inside this tool. Now let's move on and talk about a custom web shell they've been using. It's a small OSP.NET web shell. It has ability to execute system commands and upload and download files. We also observed versions where only a single feature was implemented, for example, only uploading files. They have a cool way to hide it. As you can see here, it's a mimic default error page of the IIS web server. But if you double click on the back link, it will reveal the login form. Quite cool, huh? Now let's talk about some interesting facts I have for you. They were obviously lazy when they were choosing the archive passwords. As you can see, there's clearly a patterns here. Interestingly, they also used the same passwords for the web shells. How lazy can you be? They love to store the tools in the Windows fonts folder. Most likely because the Explorer will not show binaries here, so if there are any red teamers in the audience, take a note. During our investigation, we, they also tried to resist eviction from the network. So the web shells were used as a backup channel. So when they lost access via malware, they tried to use web shells to get access back to the network. Fortunately, we found web shells before they could use them. So when they realized the web shells were not working, they leveraged already stolen credentials and get access to the emails and tried to find emails and documents related to network access and credentials. By the way, they used Russian language words for this, which means the operator speaks Russian at least to some degree. Now it's time to talk about attribution. We noticed that some of the tools, as well as the server binary, had an outer. We didn't find much on this data, but it is clear that uh, a single developer or a group behind those tools it also uh, might be related to some Asian culture thing, since we found some reference to anime and like Asian singers. So it could hint on the operator origin. During our investigation, we found an interesting activity. The operators were accessing a web shell from a VPN service. But for the few minutes, the IP address got changed and then changed back to the VPN servers back. We think this is because the operator got a VPN client disconnect, which revealed a Chinese resident IP address, possibly real IP address of the operator. Some of the WinRAR samples they've been using contained a pirated license for the Cheap China Club, which is distributed on the Chinese-speaking forums. ISPX Spy is a popular shell, web shell among Chinese thread groups. Uh, the developer of the web shell is also Chinese and have a link to, uh, to his blog in the code. The actors changed this link to Google for some reason, and it's the only thing they changed. Now, let's summarize our findings. 
Despite using rather simple TTPs, this group still managed to do well and complete the mission. We were surprised we didn't find any public information regarding this group because their operation is quite big. Many things point to the Chinese origin, but attribution is hard to make. The success is from ignorance. So many companies need to go back to basics and uh, to combat such threats. We encountered common problems like unpatched systems, lack of network segmentations, and best practices negligence. We released a white paper with all the details and ICs, so if you want to know more about this group, feel free to read it. That will be all for me. Thanks a lot for coming to my talk. I will be happy to answer any questions.